Question, question, so many, it's your boy back again, the one and only Keith Allen, your motivation guy. That's right, I'm your motivation guy. You know why? Because my job is to motivate you to be great in everything, not just playing this game, but I'm talking about, I want you to be the best person that you can possibly be because I know how hard we are on ourselves sometimes. I know we are, we are our biggest critic. You know, we can put ourselves down, but you know what? You gotta believe in yourself because if you don't believe in yourself, who else will? Well, maybe me, <laughs> but keep going, man. Keep grinding, never give up, never surrender. I'm here today to teach you guys some new tricks so you can become a better Fortnite player. You know, when you get into a fight, do you feel that either just adrenaline pumping? Do you need to be entirely in the zone to face off against your opponent? So how does it feel when you've completely lost track of that, especially during your build battle and you try desperately to just spot them again? You know, that panic is exactly what we're gonna be talking about today. However, we're gonna be teaching you how to use it to your advantage. You guys ready for this? Yo, before that, we need to get this bunch of crunch. Let's get this going. You know, every game that has human players going up against each other will always have that panic factor involved in every decision in every battle. If two players are equally skilled, the deciding point is gonna often come down to which one had their head in the game and which one falters due to just not knowing what to do. You know, there are so many factors that have an effect on how level-headed that you are at the time, right? You know, having a full inventory of ammo, plenty of building materials, and, and good equipment can really leave a player feeling confident in their readiness to really take on the fight. But I will say this, lacking any of those can really put a player in the spot. You know, this is just one of the many ways psychology works in Fortnite. However, there is another factor to take into account, and that's the players you encounter and their own actions. Like if you ever watched a pro demonstrating their building abilities, you can easily tell that their skill levels greatly outmatch yours, right? So if you are going up against someone like Ninja, their techniques was gonna definitely make you feel like you're losing the fight. Therefore, your heart is gonna be in it, or you're gonna struggle to keep up with your opponent before getting like off the map. But I will say this, if you have the confidence to push forward, then inducing panic can be a great weapon that you can use to psych out your opponents and start controlling the battle. Third partying your opponents can be a great way to just really confuse people. Like there's nothing more fun than just being locked in combat with an opponent only to have another player show up and start hitting you. By fun, of course, I'm talking about frustrating. Like if you happen to spot two players fighting, don't be afraid to jump in with a just preemptive strike. In fact, while you're at it, you can also just gauge their skill levels based on how they're fighting each other. And so if both players are just firing at each other but doing very little terms of building, <laughs> then odds are these are going to be easy kills. But if both players are going at it and building circles around each other then you know both of them are definitely skilled and might be a little bit more difficult to fight one-on-one -on -one. luckily if you're third party well you almost have the guarantee that both players have taken some hits and won't be completely patched up health wise this can be a perfect opportunity to strike and push the players harder when they're already exhausted from fighting just remember that third parting doesn't guarantee you a victory though. It simply just puts you in a better position to win. So don't forget to put in that effort, I'm telling you. Now, if you're interested in learning some A-grade fighting techniques, then you gotta visit ProGuys.com today by clicking on the link below. There you can get some professional grade lessons from some of our coaches. You can also learn skills such as reading your opponent, making better decisions, a variety of different techniques that you can really just come in handy with your fights. As always, the simplest thing that you can do to induce panic is get the first shot in, man. This can leave your opponent struggling to get to safety, spot you, and just patch up before healing to really take another fight. However, let's get into more details here. With so many weapons to choose from, you also really need to understand how to use each weapon and really use them right. Okay, so there is a benefit to tagging players, but you must also take into account the distance in which you do it. Say for example that you managed to land a shot with an assault rifle on a target that is far away from you. So while you may have gotten in the first shot, the accuracy of your weapon will most likely not get the job done. In fact, it is likely that your opponent will be able to box themselves in and heal up without having to worry about you breaking through anytime soon. So if you really wanna do some long range tagging, all right, it's gonna always be best to have a sniper rifle just close the distance between you and them. So sniping often works best when you have the high ground on an opponent. If you have the low ground, your enemy will definitely be able to get out of sight. So, you know, if you're looking down on them, they won't be able to reposition without leaving themselves exposed unless they decide to build. Even then, they're still gonna need to leave the box eventually. A well-placed sniper shot will immediately send them into a panic. So when using shotguns, one trick that you can use guys during that tag shot is a little misdirection. Like if you manage to get the jump on your opponent, just try lining that first shot in, man. I'm telling you, game changer. Even if you don't get that 200 pump shot or you were using lever, you can still get 
get in some decent damage in. But I will say this, instead of continuing close range, watch to see what they do. After that first shot, just pull back and just gain some distance. Your opponent might try to counter with the pump of their own, and changing the combat from close range to medium range can really leave them at a disadvantage since they were expecting to get into a shotgun fight, and now they need to switch weapons again. This is what it means to make them panic and question their moves, so be smart and be fast. Speaking of fast, sometimes what you need to get the advantage in a fight is really to use peppers or spicy fish. These consumables will give you a decent speed boost, which not only makes you harder to hit, but also allows you to quickly shift your location during a fight. This difference in stats, oh my goodness, it's gonna help improve your movement and make you an overall harder to hit target. So there is nothing more frustrating than being aware that an opponent is nearby, but being unable to land a hit, oh my goodness. And so if you end up using all of your ammunition that forces you to reload, meaning it leaves you wide open, unless you want to switch weapons like the purpose of making your opponent panic is really making sure they need extra time to come up with a plan against you those extra seconds it takes to reload or reposition can put really a wrench in your opponent's plans essentially the key thing that you want to take away from this is movement in a fight you never want to stay in the same position for too long but you also don't want to just be too predictable either though so the more unpredictable your builds and movements are the more thought process goes into fighting you right this can make your opponent sloppy and more likely to really choke as they really try to juggle too many things at once. You know, every expert knows this, that the sign of a sweaty player is that they immediately start building the moment that they spot you. And so while this can be quite annoying to deal with, I mean, it's also a fantastic way to really psych out your opponent. Building can be a very good way to really flex your skill, but the main point here, guys, is to be aggressive. Fight aggressively, okay? Build aggressively, and more importantly, like put the pressure on them to react to your moves. Always remember to assess your opponent's builds, right? The best way to get rid of someone's entire creation is to target the pieces that really keep it held up. If you want to clear the area and you're your opponent was just foolish enough to have one or two structures keeping it up don't waste time man just trying to remove the builds around them take out those two points and just watch as the entire building falls this is going to force your opponent to start their build from scratch leaving them open to an attack you know, flames are a great way to force your opponent to move. Like it can also make their builds and hiding spots way dangerous to really bunker away in. And so the best sorts of flames is fireflies. You can carry up to six of them per inventory slot and you can chuck them wherever you want to start fire. Soon, those flames are going to spread forcing anybody into the area to get to a safe spot. This can be an interesting and chaotic way to really force players away from their tactical spots and out of the open. You know, it has the same effect as picking off players trying to outrun Storm. Like if your opponent is busy just trying to get to safety, they won't be thinking about avoiding you. You know, there are also some unconventional ways to restart a fire, which are more situational depending on where you're currently standing. Okay, always keep an eye out for gas tanks. While it would be a bad idea to really carry a gas tank, you know, the sole purpose of lighting it on fire, <laughs> you know, knowing where they spawn can really give you guys an advantage if you're not running fireflies in your inventory, but come across a situation where one just happens to be close to proximity and you need to smoke someone out. You know, the greatest advantage that you can have in Fortnite is the high ground. Don't underestimate it, man, I'm telling you. The high ground can give you guys an excellent vantage point of players in the area, but if you're high enough, your enemy might actually be unable to just really aim up at you. And so if you manage to build upwards and create a tower, you can force your opponent to build or jump pads and shockwaves are currently great ways to really get up in the air. So survey your surroundings and catch your opponents by surprise. Shockwaves cannons in particular are just a great way of getting up close and personal with your opponent. And so by watching yourself in the air, I mean, you can make it harder to track your movements. Suddenly, your opponent isn't sure where you're going to land or what weapon that you're planning to pull out. This forces them to take more of a defensive position. All right, so for more information on how to master any Fortnite meta, don't forget to visit the link down below. We got you covered here at Pro Guys. All right, so one of the most frustrating things that you can do to really another player is to take a shot and make it difficult for them to retaliate. Woo! This is why you should use building to your advantage, man. So one easy tactic pros use is to immediately build a wall after taking a shot. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Isn't this like the point of just getting a good shot to really take down your opponent right away? Good question, but I will say this, not entirely. You know, simply aiming at your opponent and just continuously firing may work for other games and even casual Fortnite. However, in competitive, your opponent will most likely know how to use builds to their advantage, all right? And this means you will most likely end up just wasting bullets trying to hit your target behind a wall. Luckily, rather than just let your opponent just gain cover, 
take the shot and put down your own wall. Not only will this defend you from retaliation, but now you control the fight and you control the new wall and can edit it however you please. This can also be used as a perfect opportunity to reposition yourself, making your opponent start questioning from which direction you're gonna be attacking from. During a box fight, the same really applies. And you know, since you're continuing fire, it'll only give your opponent more time to really box up again. So don't give them any advantage. But you can tell me that's going to be it for today's video. Once again, I'm your motivation guy, Keith Allen, the one and only man here to inspire you guys to be great all the time. I want you guys to walk in positivity. You know, I want you to have that good energy, man, because the world needs it. The world needs you to be a light because it's a lot of darkness in the world, man. But you know what? There's a light inside of you, so keep going. And that's going to be it for today's video. Once again, you know, make sure you sub to the channel. You know, like the video, spread it to your friends, man. I'm telling you right now, we're taking this channel to the next level, so be prepared. I'm telling you, it's going down. We're Remember, keep your head cool, you know, and let your opponent lose theirs. <laughs> Do so, and I'm telling you, man, you're, you're going to have an amazing advantage in future matches. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.